I think that uh, um, the trip that is portrayed as a uh, a trip to the Middle East is just a cover up for uh, the real intention of this um, a mission or trip uh, by Joe Biden, which is uh, basically to meet with um, uh, Saudi Arabia or to convince Saudi Arabia to increase the output of uh, the oil production. The real purpose and the timing of the trip uh, made by uh, Joe Biden uh, is pretty clear. We know that the uh, midterm elections in the United States are coming. President Biden's um, uh, ratings in the poll is very low. Uh, and it is due uh, because of the high infl inflation in the country. Uh, it is also due um, to the high gasoline prices. And unfortunately, it will also further diminish uh, um, uh, President Joe Biden's standing within his own party, which is strongly against uh, uh, this visit and having any co giving any concessions to Saudi Arabia and uh, Prince bin Salman specifically, uh, but also it will uh, uh, a signal to the world that United States is not so principled in in their foreign policy. Because if you um, call a, a country like Saudi Arabia, as uh, President Joe Biden did during his uh, presidential campaign, a paria state, which is an insult. Uh, and then after afterwards, when the um, special operation or the conflict in Ukraine broken out, you come to conclusion that really and truly you need to go to the Saudi Arabia and have a, and give a concession to the country. You are not, you know, sticking to your own guns. So your uh, inconsist inconsistency will be will backfire. Uh, within your own um, um, Democratic Party and also be weaponized and used by the Republicans. So so, so this is this, this is my conclusion that this will not have any significant impact. It will only backfire uh, and, and, and it will impact the, the uh, global standing of the United States and more, most importantly of President Joe Biden. United States um, uh, is unwilling to an antagonize Israel. And we know that, that Israel has a very hard stance vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis Palestinian uh, people. Uh, they are expanding their um, uh, you know, settlements um, towards West Bank. It, this will not have any impact. Um, this is a frozen conflict, but I'm not sure whether the United States is really and truly um, interested in improving the uh, conditions of Palestinian people or uh, mediate uh, a, a diplomatic solution to um, uh, Palestinian uh, uh, cause. I think that China and other international players done much more uh, by uh, attempting at least to bring both sides to the table. And I think that the um, uh, United States policy vis-a-vis -vis Palestinian people was more detrimental than help helpful. So, uh, and first of all, we have to bear in mind that this is not the core um, uh, point of uh, Joe Biden's um, trip to uh, the Middle East. Uh, the Palestinian cause and uh, Israel uh, Israeli affairs are just a cover-up for the uh, meeting with the Saudi prince and mediating and pursuing persuading the Saudi Arabia to increase the oil output. I think that we've clearly seen through this three months so far that Joe Biden and his administrations were uh, uh, unsuccessful in persuading the global South countries uh, to share the same view as the, uh, as the global north or the, or the west. Uh, I would say. Um, these countries don't see the conflict in Ukraine as a conflict between Ukraine and, and, and Russia. These countries perceive this conflict, and rightly so, simply a proxy war between the NATO and Russia. In 2014, uh, I was in uh, Ukraine, and I've seen with my own eyes how the United States mm, uh, was meddling in the situation, pushing the, the protesters to, um, uh, you know, go against the, the, the current president at that moment. So um, answering your question, I'm not sure 
and uh, that President Biden will succeed. Because if you want to uh, have a, um, a stop to the conflict, you are not sending weapons. You are asking both sides to sit at the table. But if you supply weapons to the region, the natural um, uh, outcome will be that this uh, conflict will be prolonged. And what we are seeing is that the NATO and United States specifically is just, you know, supplying more weapons. And people around the world just seeing this. And also uh, leaders in the Middle East are perfectly aware of what is happening on the ground. And they are unwilling to take sides in this conflict. That's one thing. And second thing, they are afraid or not willing to uh, antagonize Russia because they see and know that Russia both with uh, China and other BRICS countries are forming something else. Um, they are moving, trying to move from the unipolar world where the United States is a hegemon uh, towards the multipolar world where all the countries through the diplomatic solutions and conversation and respect for all the countries respective governments and solutions that the countries uh, and their citizens embrace in their uh, respective uh, countries uh, to form a democratic uh, world order where every single voice and country is equally respected rather than having a uh, someone who is imposing on uh, its own will on other countries. So I think that the Middle Eastern countries, uh, they want to participate in this uh, in this shift. They want to participate in this more equal war um, world order rather than being in this outdated uh, and dying, uh, so to speak, speaking, uh, uh, hegemonic unipolar world.